it's going to be very difficult for Dave Ziegler and Josh McDaniels to really get down to the 53-man roster. And today, I'm going to give you guys my projections. I'm going to give you guys who I think will ultimately be on this squad, as well as how I think guys are going to kind of shape up and how guys are going to end up starting. I think the Raiders have a very, very hard thing uh, to kind of do, right? It's a hard task. Because our team is super deep. Our team is very, very good. It, 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 I shouldn't use the word good, but they're they're deep as hell, right? Our, our backup guards, our backup corners, our backup safeties are all solid players. And I don't even know if that's technically the right thing. They could just all kind of suck and we just have a lot of options. I don't know, right? We'll see as the season kind of comes along. But I'm going to attempt to really get into the 53 guys today. We're going to start right away with the wide receivers. Again, very, very difficult thing to do. But I think the Raiders are going to keep six wide receivers and I think you could project four of them, right? In Devontae Adams, Kobe Myers, Hunter Renfro, and Trey Tucker. I think that's pretty simple to, to be able to do. Uh, the other two guys that I ended up picking, DeAndre Carter gives us the flexibility as a, a kick and punt returner. So for me, I think that makes sense to keep him as one of the guys. And then the sixth wide receiver ended up being Philip Dorsett, or the sixth player, right? Outside of DeAndre Carter. Ended up being Philip Dorsett for me. Now, there are a couple of interesting options. I think Christian Wilkerson is a guy that had a really, really good preseason. And I actually ended up keeping him on the practice squad over here. So he's a guy that I think will end up on the practice squad. And then there's a couple other guys that ended up just cutting all together. Uh, Keelan Cole, as an example, as well as Cam Sims. I had the Raiders just releasing both guys. I don't, I don't think, you know, I don't think they provide a whole lot to the Raiders from a developmental perspective or even, you know, to, to kind of keep around now. I wouldn't be surprised if we ended up keeping like Keelan Cole instead of Philip Dorsett, but I just think with Philip Dorsett, you have, you know, you, you have that option of a guy who's played in this scheme, who knows the scheme, who knows the system. Um, and he's still fast as hell. And I think that's pretty clear on tape, right? So for me, we're going to keep six wide receivers. The offensive line was very difficult to do. We'll start with the tackles right away. Uh, you guys can see I chose to keep Colton Miller, Jermaine Loomer, Thayer Munford, and Dalton Wagner. So I ended up choosing four tackles. I almost cut Dalton Wagner and put him on the practice squad, but I think that would be a mistake. To be honest with you guys, I think Dalton Wagner has more upside than Thayer Munford. I, I truly believe Dalton Wagner has the upside to start. In fact, if a team that needs an offensive tackle right now, a team like the Patriots, uh, there's a couple other teams out there that may need a tackle right now. If a team out there saw the Raiders cutting Dalton Wagner to get him onto the practice squad, I can see one of these teams putting a claim in for him. Because the same way the Bears let Braxton Jones start his entire rookie season, and he gave him multiple sacks, I could see a team doing the same thing with Dalton Wagner for the same reason the Bears did, right? Because the Bears looked at it like, let's put Braxton Jones in, let this guy develop over his rookie season, let him play 17 games, and see if he'll come back into year two and be a better player. And Braxton Jones is a legit-ass left tackle now for the Chicago Bears. And I think there's a team out there that will take Dalton Wagner and do the same exact thing with him in the hopes that this guy turns out to be a very good right tackle come into his second season. And I wouldn't be surprised if a team out there picks up Dalton Wagner. So I think if you want to keep Wagner on this roster, you got to keep him as part of the active players. I don't think it's possible for the Raiders to keep Dalton Wagner without doing that. Now, they could technically just put him on the IR, but then at that point, he's out for the year. He wouldn't be able to come back. And I don't know if the Raiders need four offensive tackles. I think you could make the argument to keep four. But I think Dalton Wagner is a guy you should keep now. With that being stated, I also do think Jermaine Lunar wins that right tackle position. There, Munford hasn't shown me enough to say he's the starting right tackle. But again, if the Raiders do choose to start there, Munford, I think that's more so of the long-term development aspect, right? The best way for a offense lineman to get better is to actually play and, and, and take those reps and go through the entire season. It's the best way for a guy to develop. But I think Jermaine Luma right now gives the Raiders the best chances to possibly have success. Now, for the interior offense lineman, I chose five guys for the Raiders to keep around. Dylan Parham, Andre Dreams, and I chose Greg Van Rotten as the starter for right guard. And I, I only ended up doing that based off of the training camp reports and those type of things. To be honest, I don't really have confidence in the Raiders' right guard position. I just haven't seen anything that makes me feel comfortable saying, this guy's definitely legit, or this guy's definitely legit. I just haven't seen that. Even in McClendon Curtis, you can tell the guy's a rookie, and that's why I actually have the Raiders releasing him and getting him on the practice squad. I think that makes the most sense for a guy in McClendon Curtis. 
Uh, to me, it doesn't make sense to start him and possibly, or not even start him, but keep him on the active roster and have six interior offensive linemen. I think with the five that I've chosen, you have Andre James, who starts at center. Dylan Parham could be a backup guard or a backup center, as well as Hironas Grisou. Grisou was kept around last year, uh, not on the active roster, but on the practice squad. And he ended up being our um, kind of like that backup center, but he also could play guard. He has that flexibility. Um, and then I chose Alex Bars as the other guard because he started last year, right? And he was he was pretty good last year, let's just be honest. Minus week 17 where he got his ass kicked. Uh, or I guess it was technically week 18, the final game of the season against the Chiefs. He got his ass kicked against Chris Jones. Minus that one game, he had a pretty good season, right? He started for the Raiders for majority of the season at right guard. Um, so we'll see, you know, if he ends up being the starting guard. I think based off the reports, it's going to be Van Rotten, and we'll see. We'll see what ends up happening. Um, but those are the five guys that I chose to keep. I don't think it's really a surprise with the tight ends. I think Austin Hooper, Michael Mayer, and Jesper Horstead give the Raiders the best chance with the tight ends to be a good functional tight end unit i chose to keep cole fotheringham on the practice squad uh quarterbacks i think we have three quarterbacks and i do think aiden o'connell is going to actually be qb3 and i think some people may be surprised with this and i also didn't choose to try to get aiden o'connell on the practice squad i don't think that's realistic if you cut aiden o'connell to get him on the practice squad another team's going to pick him up uh, but i chose brian hoyer as quarterback too because Something tells me, and, and there's been reports as well, right? There's been reports about this. But something tells me the Raiders are going to keep three quarterbacks. And if Jimmy G were to go down, especially early on in the season, something tells me it'd be Brian Hoyer coming in. Now, I do think that's a mistake. I personally would not want that. I would rather have Aiden. I'd rather lose with Aiden O'Connell than lose with Brian Hoyer, right? I, I think with Aiden O'Connell, we can at least see what type of quarterback he is. But I do have the sense that it's going to be Brian Hoyer who's going to end up being the backup quarterback. Let's get into the running backs and, and fullbacks. You guys can see we there's five guys. Um, there's one guy that really flashed this past preseason. That's Damian Williams. I chose to cut Damian Williams because it was very difficult to actually come up with the conclusion of, of which guy to actually keep, which guy to cut. I chose to cut Damian Williams. And the reason why is because, one, Amir Abdullah and Brandon Bolden are former Patriots. At the same time, I think Josh McDaniels likes those two running backs a lot. And I don't think Josh McDaniels is ready to cut Samir White and say we messed up by taking Samir White. Which, let's be honest, Damian Williams is better than Samir White. It's clear cut as hell. Samir White is not a good running back right now. In fact, the Raiders better draft the running back in this upcoming draft. That's in the second round. They got to take a running back. Second or third round. They got to target a running back. Because it doesn't make sense if you're not going to pay Josh Jacobs the you know, 12 to $15 million dollars then you need to draft the running back because you can't go forward with Zamir White and Abdullah and Bolden as your three running backs going into the next season. And yeah, some people will say, well, if Damian Williams is better, why not just keep him and you know, maybe you have five running backs. There's just not enough roster space for that. Uh, ultimately, I think Damian Williams was a solid running back, but I don't think he's going to, I don't think it makes sense. Now, if the Raiders are willing to cut ties with Zamir White, uh, cut him, possibly bring him onto the practice squad if they're willing to possibly lose him. I think that could also make sense, right? I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind Zamir White on the practice squad. Now, I could see the Raiders possibly just putting him on the injured reserve the same way they did it to Britton Brown. If you guys have not heard yesterday, we, we, uh, we said Britton Brown, we put, we sent Britton Brown to the IR. So he's out for the year. Um, but he's still technically part of the roster. But he just can't play this year. You could do that with Zamir White, but then that also takes away the possibility of him having like 30, 40, 50 snaps, carries, or whatever this year, and him potentially developing and learning a little bit, right? Uh, so we'll see what ends up happening. So Josh Jacobs as your number one, Zamir White. Is it really the number two to me? I, I think if there's going to be a, a third down running back, it's going to be Amir Abdullah. I think he's really the third down back for the Raiders. I think even Brandon Bolden come in and, and have some carries and maybe even do better than Zamir White. Like, it's, it's possible, right? Uh, and I don't want to knock Zamir because he may prove me wrong with the first team unit. We'll see what ends up happening. Of course, Jakob Johnson is going to be the fullback. Uh, the defense was, was difficult as well. Uh, so I chose to keep five defensive ends. Um, the top three, of course, Max Rosby, Tyree Wilson, Chandler Jones. And then behind those two guys, I chose Malcolm Koontz and Jordan Willis. Now, I took Malcolm Koontz over some of the other guys. You know, some people wanted Adam Plant to kind of stick around. Um, there's some other guy, Isaac Rochelle is another guy that could have possibly stuck around. 
I chose Malcolm Koontz because I think Koontz being a third overall, a third round rookie, only going into his third seasons. Why did I say third round rookie? He's not a rookie. He's a third year player, right? But uh, he was taken in the third round. He was a guy who has a lot of upside and he's a guy who looks better, right? He's looked better and better and better. And sometime down the line, Malcolm Koontz is going to be a legit player. It's just a matter of time of when it happens and if the Raiders are willing to wait until that happens. I also chose to keep Jordan Willis because I think Willis is kind of unique in that he's a, a strong defensive end. He's one of those power defensive ends. And then at the interior defensive tackle position, I chose to keep six defensive linemen. Again, very difficult. You know, I almost thought about cutting Adam Butler, but I think Butler showed enough promise in the preseason that you should keep him around. Uh, outside of Adam Butler, obviously Byron Young, we ended up drafting. So he's going to be around. Um, and then I think John Jenkins really flashed as well. So I kept him and Neil Farrell run. And then, of course, I think the two starters will likely be Belil Nichols, Jerry Tillery. Although I think Jerry Tillery uh, will rotate, right? He's not guaranteed to play as many reps as Belil Nichols. Now, now keep in mind, this was kind of difficult to do because uh, Matthew Butler was a guy we just drafted. But I think the Raiders are going to possibly get Matthew Butler onto the practice squad. And I think that could make the most sense for him. He hasn't really flashed. He hasn't really shown us anything. And I think at this point, yes, we did put, invest a fifth round pick in him just last season. But at the end of the day, you, you got to at some point keep the best players as well, right? So I think right now it makes sense to get rid of a guy like Matthew Butler and possibly keep one of these, these other six defensive tackles. Now, I could see John Jenkins getting released and swap for Matthew Butler. But do you guys think Matthew Butler is going to get picked up by another team if the Raiders put him on the practice squad? It's possible he may not, right? Um, the linebackers were kind of difficult as well. Now, uh, I could have chosen to possibly just go with five defensive tackles and end up cutting John Jenkins and then keeping five linebackers, but I ended, ended up only keeping four linebackers. Uh, and the reason why I did this was because I think this year, Patrick Graham, from a scheme perspective, is also going to do things a little bit differently. I think one of the trends we've seen in the NFL recently is uh, we've seen these these bigger safeties play in the box a little bit more, which also means you need less linebackers. Plus, we're playing on a lot of nickel packages already, which only require two linebackers. And I wouldn't be surprised if we played more dime packages. And we bring guys in that are really like those big nickel safeties, big dime safeties, and those type of things. Uh, but I chose to keep Robert Splane, Divine Diablo, Amari Bernie, and Luke Masterson. Uh, so I kept the four, and I ended up cutting both Curtis Bolton and Drake Thomas. If we do keep an, a fifth linebacker, I think it'll be Drake Thomas over Curtis Bolton, although Bolton looked really, really good in preseason. But Drake Thomas did as well, and I think Drake Thomas is a little bit more upside. And I think he's more likely to get picked up than Curtis Bolton. Um, but I ended up choosing to cut him. I ended up choosing to put him on the practice squad. Now, also, I, I guess I didn't mention this with defense tackles. I did cut uh, Nesta Jade Silvera, and that was such a difficult decision to do. Um, again, I could see the Raiders saying, hey, let's get rid of Jerry Tillery. Let's get rid of John Jenkins instead of Nesta Jade Silvera. The only reason I chose to cut him is because, you know, Neil Farrell was a fourth round pick. Byron Young was a third round pick. Matthew Butler was a fifth round pick. And uh, Silvera was a seventh round pick, right? So it's, it's hard to keep all these different defensive tackles plus keeping the veterans. So unless we're really ready to move on from the Jerry Tillery's, uh, John Jenkins looked really good. Unless we're ready to move on from both of those guys, we got to cut some of these other defensive tackles, right? And it's not going to be Byron Young. It's not going to be Neil Farrell. Those two guys were highly picked defensive players. So, again, it gets very difficult to, to cut some of these uh, players down. Um, but, yeah, I, I, we ended up releasing Drake Thomas and, and Curtis Bowen. Keep in mind, these are all practice squad guys, right? So we're all bring, bringing all these guys back. Uh, is there a chance that one, or, one of these guys gets picked up? Absolutely. But it's highly unlikely other teams – you know, who already are having difficult times getting out of their 53 guys are going to go ahead and cut another guy just to pick up one of the Raiders practice squad guys, right? Drake Thomas can't be added to another practice squad. If the team wants him, they're going to have to add him to the active roster, which means they got to not only get down to 53, but 52 guys at that point, right? Uh, so again, I think it's going to be very, very difficult for the Raiders. Um, cornerbacks, I ended up keeping six guys. Um, I could Corey Bennett, obviously we, we picked him kind of high, Brian Faison, I think, you know, at least he was slated to start early on in the process. Uh, and then Marcus Peters will be one of the starters. And I chose Duke Shelley over some of the other guys. Now there are some young guys, there's some veteran guys. 
Um, but I think guys like Sam Webb, uh, even a guy in, in uh, Azizi's Hearn, who showed a little bit in, in camp and preseason, are going to end up on the practice squad. But I chose Brandon Faison, Jacarian Bennett, and Duke Shelley, as well as Marcus Peters, Tyler Hall, and Nate Hobbs. Those are the six guys that I think will end up making it. Um, I think Duke Shelley has some upside. And I don't think the Raiders should cut him to try to get him on the practice squad. I think he would get picked up. I think cornerbacks... And I think tackles in those two positions where other teams are absolutely going to try to pick apart from other squads, right? That's why I'm, I feel more comfortable cutting McClendon Curtis as opposed to a guy like Dalton Wagner, right? I think cornerbacks and tight end or cornerbacks and tackles are the positions where other teams are going to try to take your guy. So, uh, to me, we keep Duke Shelley as safeties. I think this is kind of difficult as well. Um, but I think we keep five. And I think these are the five that make the most sense. These are the guys that have played the most. I do think Isaiah Paul Amal is a cut candidate. And I, I say that because he's played a lot in the preseason. He hasn't really flashed a whole lot to me. He doesn't look all that good. And Chris Smith was actually drafted by this team. So if we do keep four safeties, I can see Isaiah Paul Amal being one of the guys gone. So, And of course, with the kicker punter, you guys know who that's going to be. So. Those are the guys that I have. I know I'll probably have like seven guys that are off here. It's always difficult. You know, you, you never know exactly what the coaching staff is thinking, exactly who they think will end up being on the roster and how those guys can contribute. And it's always difficult for us to try to figure it out on top of that, right? Because there's so many good players in the NFL. There's so many guys that do certain things and they always get cut every year, right? Plus, I'm sure there's guys that are going to get cut that the Raiders may feel like, hey, let's let's go pick that guy up, right? The Patriots, the Chiefs, someone cuts a guy, well, let's go target that guy, right? And for the Raiders, that could happen this year, right? So uh, keep in mind, you know, this was recorded around uh, 1.30, 2 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. So by the time the video's out, uh, hopefully the cuts don't happen. But as soon as they do, we'll kind of get into it. I think the deadline is Tuesday, so... You know, we got a full day still technically, but we are getting updates throughout the day. So let me know what you guys think. Let me know who you guys think could be a surprise cut for the Las Vegas Raiders. Let me know in the comments below. Thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time with another video.